this example, we're going to use Excel to calculate elasticities along the whole demand curve, um, given a fake demand curve. But it'll show you the process of, of finding um, different elasticity values along any point in this line. Um, and it'll show you the different moving parts of the elasticity formula. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, this is another tab inside of the chocolate milk Excel file that you should download from the, the previous video that we just did. Um, so let me switch over to the screen. So this is what you should see um, on the elasticity panel. So all we have here is uh, quantity and we have price. Um, we can plot this and actually show a demand curve. So if we select these two um, columns here, we're going to insert. We're not going to click here to insert a line graph because that will insert two different lines, one going from 0 to 10 and one going from 5 to 55. We don't want that. We just want um, an actual line along an x-axis and a y-axis. The way Excel does that is it calls it a scatter plot, but then we don't actually put the points. We can just do this right here. And so here is our demand curve. Um, we can name it instead of price. We'll name it demand curve. There we go. And again, it's a straight line, but economists like to call all lines curves because they do, um, because they can potentially be curves. So here's our demand curve. So from the lecture, we learned that this early part of demand curves are generally highly elastic, and the later part of demand curves are inelastic. And the very middle point of a linear demand curve is perfectly unit elastic, where elasticity is one. Um, but what we can do is figure out the actual elasticity value for each of these points along this line here. And the way we do that is I already included this formula here. This is the formula for um, elasticity. And it's actually a, a, a different translation of, of kind of the main formula that we looked at in the lecture. Uh, the main definition we looked at was that elasticity is the percent change in demand divided by the percent change in price. Um, Using those formulas, we can use algebra and, and rearrange the things so it looks like this um, because this is easier to work with because we have quantity and price and we can actually figure out these values here. Um, on this resources page down below this video, I show all of the algebra steps to get to this formula here. Um, you can also just um, know that this is the formula you can use. So what we need to do is we need to figure out um, a few different things here. We need to figure out the, we know P, we know Q, we don't know change in Q, and we don't know change in P, or delta Q, delta P. So we need to figure out those things first. So to do that, let's go ahead and make a new column. We're going to make one column called delta Q, and then another column called delta P. Um, if you're on a Mac, you can type that delta symbol by pressing option J and that's delta. If you're on Windows, it's going to be alt plus some random string of numbers. Um, or you can just go to Wikipedia and search for delta Greek letter and then select that and copy it here. Or you can just say like change or something. Uh, but because I'm on a Mac, I'm just going to do option um, J and get the delta sign. Okay, so the change in quantity, delta Q, all that is, is basically the marginal quantity. It's just the, the change in quantity as you move from 0 to 1, and then 1 to 2, and 2 to 3, um, which is fairly easy to figure out. We just do the same thing we've been doing with other marginal things, where we just say here's the current one minus the previous one, and delta Q is 1. And if we drag this all the way down, it's going to be 1 all the way down, um, because we're just changing quantity up by 1 every time. Then we want the change in price, or delta P. And so we're going to do the same um, calculation here. Basically, this is marginal price. So we're going to say 50 minus the previous one, minus 55. And if we drag this all the way down, it should be 1 and or negative 5 all the way down. OK, that's good. Then we have, um, so we have all of the different pieces now. We have price and quantity and change in quantity and change in price. So we have all of the different pieces of our elasticity formula here. Um, we could just make a new column here for elasticity and have all of the pieces be in the formula. Um, and you might do that in real life. But um, just to show all of the different moving parts, I'm going to separate it out into separate columns here. 
So we're going to make a new column here called delta Q over delta P. And we're actually going to call it negative delta because, yeah, we're going to put a negative sign there. Wow, it doesn't like that. In Excel, if you ever do any math thing, like a plus or a minus or an equals, and you want it to actually be a plus or a minus or an equals, you have to do a single apostrophe before it. And that's just the way Excel works. So if we do apostrophe minus delta Q delta P, then the apostrophe will disappear um, and the minus sign will stay. The apostrophe is still here up in the, in the formula bar, um, but it's not visible here. And that's just a weird Excel thing. Because technically, if you press like an equal sign, that means it's looking for functions. So if you want something to start with an actual equal sign, again, you do the, wow, you do single apostrophe equals, and then that will do it. And apparently, you have to do that with a minus. Okay, so we want this first chunk, this um, minus delta Q over delta P. So we're going to say equals negative delta Q divided by delta P. And there's that. And if we drag this down, there's the first part of our formula. Second part is P over Q. So we'll make a new column here called P over Q. So that's going to be price. Oh, we have to say equals price over quantity. And we drag this all the way down like that. OK. Now we have both of the parts of our formula. We have um, this first part, this first part, this negative delta Q over delta P, and then we have P over Q. If we multiply those together, we'll get elasticity. Um, there is not any fancy way of doing the, the fancy epsilon on a Mac. Um, in Windows, you would press op or Alt and then type some random string. Um, I have a shortcut on my computer um, in the, the text replacement section where if I type uh, semicolon, semicolon, epsilon, it'll actually do that. Um, so that's neat. You can set that up on your computer. Like um, if you go to the system preferences on a Mac, you can change the, the text replacement thing. So that becomes a shortcut if you're really interested in typing Greek letters. It's fun to do and super nerdy. Okay, so to calculate elasticity, we just multiply those two things together, the 0.2 and the 50. So we say negative delta Q over delta P times P over Q. And we hit enter. And if we drag this all the way down, there it is. So these are our elasticity values. Um, and if you remember from the lecture, a 1 means it's perfectly unit elastic, which means if the price goes up by 10%, then quantity will go down by exactly 10%, um, which we don't really generally care about. Well, we, it's really just kind of the boundary between inelastic things where they're negative. So in this case, this means if price goes up for this 0.375, if price goes up by 10%, then quantity will go down by 3.75%. <clears throat> So that's what that is showing here. These are the more elastic things. So if you're currently at two and the price goes up by 10%, um, then the quantity will go down by 45%, which is a big number. People are very, very elastic at that point. And so there's the actual elasticity values along this whole demand curve here. Somewhere in between five and six, it switches from elastic to inelastic. Um, the actual exact value of that is, um, I think it goes from 0 to 11. So it's the midpoint of 0 to 11, which is 5 and a half. That's where it should switch from um, elastic to inelastic, is it 5 and a half, which looks accurate. So 5 is 1.2, 6 is 0.833. So somewhere in between there, 5.5 is where that switches to unit, or it hits unit elasticity and switches to inelastic. So that's how you can calculate elasticity if you just have um, the uh, quantity and price of things in Excel.